This is the inbound secret. My name is Bryce, and I'm your host for The Inbound Secret, where we're talking with top performers and health experts and sales badasses alike about their strategies to optimize their well-being and performance. Once again, this is The Inbound Secret, and, and let's get rocking and rolling. This is The Inbound. This is, this is The Inbound. This is The Inbound. This is The Inbound Secret. What's going on, guys? Bryce here with The Inbound Secret coming to you again. I know it's been a little bit since we last saw each other, but we got a big one for you. We got John Malott here today. Some of you may know him from Build Your Empire. Most of you probably know him from his new initiative, Sold Out in Four Days. Oh, snaps, athletic movements coming here. John, without further ado, introduce yourself to everybody here at The Inbound Secret. Hey, well, well, first off, Bryce, I'm glad that we're on here. I got, I got a lot of respect for what you're doing. This is the kind of stuff I love, the information, getting this stuff up. But anyways, yeah, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm your unlikely CEO in a lot of ways because, you know, I don't, I don't have all the things that society says you're supposed to have to be successful. I don't have a college degree. I don't even have a high school diploma. As a matter of fact, my... My first felony arrest, I was 15 years old. I ended up spending most of my, my young teenage years locked in, in juvenile detention facilities. Uh, by the time I get out and I'm you know, moving around, something that we now know as the crack epidemic that hit our neighborhood pretty hard. We didn't call it crack back then. We were free basing cocaine. And it was, a, my, it was my first venture into entrepreneurship. But nobody <laughs> told me, don't get high on your own supply. I didn't get that memo. I found myself in a drug rehab after having a heart attack from smoking crack cocaine. And, but really that's where everything started to change for me in, in this drug rehab. There's a, a former motorcycle outlaw gang member by the name of Dave. Dave was a counselor there that was helping young people get their shit together. And Dave held the mirror up. Dave was like, listen, man, you can make all the excuses you want. You can blame your parents, the police. He said, this is you. You're here because of you. And he was the first guy to give me personal development. I didn't even know this world existed. He gave me a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And that was the seed that was planted that eventually, I mean, it took a while. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, clearly, I'm not that smart because it took me a while to finally catch on. My final felony arrest, I was 24 years old. I was sitting on the bullpen floor in the Milwaukee County Jail, July 4th, 1993, contemplating my life. And it was there that I finally said, okay, yes, I was was a drug addict yes I was a loser criminal gang member all this stuff I said that's who I was that's not who I'm gonna be and you know it is you ever drink too much Bryce and you're hanging over the toilet and you're like God if you could just get me out of this point, I'll <laughs> never drink again that was me whining like a little baby to God on the bullpen floor and but th but that time I lived and, and after that after 24 years old I never touched drugs again never got arrested uh well other than you know not arrested but speeding tickets are still a problem in my life but other than that you know i i, I made a decision and, and and i pursued entrepreneurship with everything i had um matter of fact the, the the for me the same relentless pursuit i had for my drug habit i used that to fuel my energy in entrepreneurship. I just traded, I really just traded one addiction for a new addiction. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause so we, we've been tinkering with this idea. We haven't put a brand to it, but a virtually limitless, we've got a couple of things going on. Funnel driven was my first digital marketing company, right? Like I went, I went from your old brick and mortar after. <laughs> so I'll bring it back a little bit. I just released a book called how prolific mistakes make prolific profits. Right. And that entire story was basically my retrospective inside look using my dumb ass as an example for everybody else because i had drug issues i had criminal issues i had arrests i had i got fucking kicked out of a county when i was like 14 first time i shot at i was 13. Uh, any mistake that a juvenile or like young adult could have made threw myself right into that now it all makes sense yeah and the, that's why i appreciate you coming on and saying that like that because the same the same kind of dedication that you have towards whatever fuckery that we were in in our past right because it wasn't one decision it wasn't like i woke up on a tuesday and was like gonna fuck up my life it was 
tiny little decisions every day that I'd rather go have fun than do what I need to get get done or now better than later or eh, I can procrastinate that and then it doesn't happen. And those tiny little decisions ended up becoming this just relentless path that I had constructed for myself. And you said something very important. You you had that same kind of pursuit. You traded addiction for addiction. Most entrepreneurs, most successful entrepreneurs that are impact-driven, I specify that because that's like our bread and butter. We love helping impact-driven entrepreneurs have the same kind of thing. They just traded an addiction. It wasn't like they were just like, eh, okay. It was, they were alcoholics. They were drug addicts. They were, they had a criminal past. And that's kind of where, we've been toying with this idea from plug to profits, what we're currently naming it. And it's a rehabilitation, personal development program more than anything. We're not doing rehab. We're not doing like your traditional buy this e-course. We're taking the concepts of personal development coaching. What One of the things build your empire and what you have become synonymous with and bringing it to people who are stuck in that plateau. They know they want something better. But all they can do right now is go sling some cocaine or go bootleg some alcohol or go hustle to make it happen. And we're going to bring them the tools that they need to be able to get out of that. I love that. And so that's a good segue for kind of where I, where I want to have our first question for you. So the people that are familiar with you know your story from incarcerated to multimillionaire from a very common past to a very uncommon future how did you how was your experience because mine was probably different than yours i i was at one point with a gun in my mouth at 3 a.m that was my that was my catalyst what was your catalyst to get you to to trade addictions well you know first the first one was when you realize you have destroyed all the relationships around you, all the people you care about don't really want anything to do with you anymore. When you burned all those bridges, uh, in a way you're, you're, what you just said is, is interesting because at 17 years old, when I was laying in that bed, I had resigned to the fact that I was going to die. You know, Mm -hmm. some circumstances happened that my mother showed up who I hadn't seen in a long time. Anyway, I'm not going to go into all the deep, but the bottom line is, you had a gun in your mouth. I found other ways to kill myself. You know, I, I was yeah. I, I was killing myself in a different form because I did not like myself. I didn't like what I became, who I was, all that. So that was really that was a huge redefining moment in my life because then because after I got past some of that and I got cleaned up a little bit, I started realizing, look, I I, I, actually, I do want to live. <laughs> I do yeah. want to see some things. You know, I'm like, oh shit, it, it, maybe it's not so bad. And you know, and what contributed to me wanting to live was personal development because now i'm like i'm just i'm going through another page and i'm like oh man there's a different world out there that i wasn't even aware existed and what if because dave the drug counselor he planted those seeds you could be this person because he was one who said that i'm like well what am i gonna do i wasn't born in the house with the rolls royce in the garage i don't have that pedigree and all this nonsense mm-hmm. i don't speak well i don't look the part and he said, he, he, this is what he said to me. I'll never forget it. He said, I could teach anybody. I can teach anybody business skills. I can teach them book smarts. Get books, I can teach you business skills. But he said, I cannot teach anybody what you have, the sixth sense that you have. Mm-hmm. Said, I can't teach that. He said, you, and he, he was trying to convince me at the time that I had an advantage over like all these people that I thought were just swans on the lake. Like they just had it all figured out. Well, later on, you realize everyone's jacked up. <laughs> I was like, I thought I was like, <laughs> everybody screwed up the doctor screwed up the lawyer screwed up the ceo the, they're all screwed up and you know mine was just more out in the open probably than a lot of other people so anyways but that was that was a big redefining moment for me it was going through that process not wanting or resigning to the fact that i'm just i'm such a loser that my life didn't matter anyhow but then getting the seeds planted by a mentor personal development it started to change the way I saw myself. And it was slow, of course. <laughs> I wish I could say we went from there, we went straight to the top and we were blowing up. Everybody loved us and it wasn't anything like that. But uh, No, it's, it was- it's, it's pushing a boulder uphill for sure. Yeah. 
I mean, one of the so the, there's two things that that I kind of want to add to that because the the resonance between the two stories are are impeccable. One of the first intros that I had to personal development was I was pro- I was probably 18, 19, maybe 20, and I was drinking too much, partying too much at the time. Started my first company around that time, and got a little bit of a big head, right? Like you you grow up you make two grand a month. It's good money. All of a sudden you start hitting six figure years and you're like, fuck. Okay. And then you start fucking off a little bit, having a little too much fun. Not really, not really prepping. Cause nobody teaches you how to do business. Nobody, there's no entrepreneur school. that's like, this is the way you should do it. You basically just fall and eat shit a lot until you figure it out. And during that time frame. My first intro to personal development, long before I had the, the, that catalyst moment, was a gentleman named Trey. And he ended up actually becoming one of my first mentors. At long back in the day, he, he's since retired, and I think he's living his best life over in Oregon somewhere right now. But he said a, a quote that I'll never forget. It's, if you can't live in a glass house, do you even know who you are? Mm. And now that, that was powerful because I, I, at face value, you're just like, well, I don't want people to know every part of me. And then you think about it and you're like, well, why not? <laughs> like what, what's the issue if they do, if, if you're not ashamed of who you are, if you can unapologetically be you and work towards a better you every day, because just accepting who you are, doesn't mean you can't improve. Why does it, why does it matter? Right. And that started the wheels turning and that kind of led down this pathway where you're right. It is trading an addiction for addiction. Like I work probably three times as hard for myself than I ever did for any employer. <laughs> I can relate to that. Uh, and it wasn't something that like I, I went in going because much like probably yourself, you start getting a taste for entrepreneurship and you're like, oh, I got freedom. I can buy my time back. And then you convince yourself, I'm going to do it because I want more time to myself. But then the second that starts happening, you're like, no, I could change more lives if I just put in more effort and help other people do it. And then you just start this cycle where you get addicted to that. With that pathway, you've gone through a couple big moments. You hear the term black swan event when we talk about like economic crisis or, or world crisis. And we're in this weird paradigm in 2020, 2021, where we've had like three or four black swan events, something that's only supposed to happen once every century, had like three or four of them. You've had two that are publicly facing. Yeah. I want to know, I don't want to know the, how did it feel to make seven figures? I don't want to know how, how it felt to, to get a brand international. That's face value stuff. I want to know how you changed during that evolution and how that's helped you change other people man well it's it's interesting because you triggered another thought because when i when i started making money i thought i was the deal like i'm the man you know there's a there's a rap song wait till i get my money right you won't you can't talk to me or something like that Mm -hmm. and that was me my head got so damn big when I, and I'm, I'm telling you, it wasn't big money. It was like, I think I made $14,000 in a month. And that was like, dude, I made it, man. And I was an asshole. I'm a, I was cocky, but I was fortunate that I did have a mentor that was that was in the mix with me quite a bit. And I remember, I know what he said. He basically hung up on me. He said, look, look, you forgot where you came from. And because of that, you're on your way back. He said, he said, call me when you get your shit together. He hung up. Now, back then you could talk to your mentees a certain way because you know, we were, I think we were a little tougher back then. Now, if you say Can't, you cancel them, culture didn't exist. <laughs> like, I don't even want to mentor people anymore. Cause I'm like, man, what if I say something that offends them? Next thing you know, they're putting me on blast everywhere. They're, they hate me. They're spreading a lot. Cause I see what's happened to some people, but people are fragile, man. You got to be careful. Mm-hmm. So that for me, what happened was it was an internal, like I have, you know, ego is the enemy which is on my writing hand for a reason, because my ego got so big that I was start, I really was heading back to where I came from just because of that. And I started, you know, again, I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm the man. I'm not, and people, people might not say much to you and they might applaud you when you're acting like the big shot, but they can't wait to see you fall. They can't. Oh, 100%. 
Oh, they're just waiting. And, when you fall, they're going to throw rocks at you. They're going to find everything they can. Like, I told you he was no good. You know, I told you he wasn't shit. Yeah. It's, it's easier. It's that whole misery loves company, right? It's funny you bring up a tattoo. I've got, I've got a bunch of them myself. One of my first ones is right here, right above my heart. It says, so... So did his soul who was ever fleeing on would turn himself to rebehold the past, which never yet a living person left. Oh, wow. And it's book one stanza five line 13 from Dante's Inferno, the divine comedy. And <clears throat> it was, it was one of the biggest, first off, it's my favorite book, but it was one of the biggest impact statements to me. Cause long before I knew personal development, pick apart that statement for a second. So did he, whose soul was forever fleeing onward, turn himself to rebehold the past, which never yet a living person left. It's self-reflection in its truest form. And it just so happens to be that in the, in the timestamp of that story in Dante's Inferno, it's set around the time that he's entering the gates of hell, knowing he'll never make it out. <laughs> but he's doing it to redeem the soul of his wife and his children. So there's an impact, right? And that's kind of transcended over time and for a long time i couldn't really figure out what i was what i was doing with this information right it was just like chilling mm -hmm. and my newest impact tattoos right here in my right bicep i can see it every morning when i wake up but it's on camera a lot it's right below the sleeve and it says you were made to thrive not just survive that's become our mission statement I like that. and and that mission statement came from what inspired me to do the book I've had businesses fail. I've had love lives fail. I've ruined hundreds of relationships. At one point, I almost ruined my relationship with my own family. And if I can figure out how to get out of that, granted, with the help of some great mentors, good coaching, personal development, reading more than watching, listening more than talking, and really just going for it. Because there's a switch that goes off in your head when, when you have the the choice of the past that we had because I wasn't thrown into it. I didn't come from a bad childhood. I, I didn't grow up in South Central. Like I'm, I'm from Mount Lake Terrace, Seattle. <laughs> right. <laughs> you have this moment where you're like, well, what happens if I fail? I'm right here again. <laughs> there's, there's only look it up once you get to a certain point with your evolution, you're wearing a build your empire shirt right now. <clears throat> and I know that was your brand. It was your bread and butter. It's, it's what made John Malat, at least publicly facing. You've done a lot of stuff behind the scenes. You've, you've become a keynote speaker at some of the most influential stages in the world. You've mentored thousands of people. Hell, last I checked, you had over a million people benefit from some of your stuff that you've you've gone through privately and otherwise part of that is because i'm i'm old older <laughs> what made you take that to another level and seize an opportunity for oh snap which at face value great accomplishment but hard industry to break into without a without any previous expertise what what was the the thought process because that's a prime example of pivoting you yeah. saw 2020 come you're like i right, build your empires doing its thing we're still making an impact how can i help more people and pivot tell me about that because a lot of people listening need that pivot they need that aha moment yeah you know and build, build your empire was Really, what we set out to—I I, was—I always was in the event bi event business in some form or another. And, and I, people used to hit me up and say, uh, "We need a motivational speaker." And my wife, my I'm, my wife, you no, know, I, I get offended by that term. I said, "I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm an entrepreneur that speaks." Mm -hmm. I, I think if you motivate an idiot, you got to motivate an idiot. I, I, I'm I'm a guy who had salespeople, and I had. I had a stuff that needed to get moved into the marketplace. And all I knew was I got to communicate this in some form. And, but I, I was always afraid of the stage. I was always afraid of that type of stuff. I, I scared to death. I still don't even like doing it today, but I used to see people that were very dispassionate in how they were delivering information. And I was sitting on, it's like, are you freaking, are you kidding me? Then I would go complain. And then they would say, well, you can do it better than you do it. I'm like, oh, okay. I'll just let them keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> to build up enough courage and nerve to actually go, what, what annoys me today a little bit is that everybody wants to get on the stage and be a speaker and motivation speaker and haven't really 
paid the price. Because I, I remember I it was two two of my guys in my living room, and I'm talking to them, and they they both quit. So I was like, I must be a terrible motivator. <laughs> After I tried to motivate two of my, the only two I had, they both quit on me. I'm like, oh, shit, I really suck at this whole thing. So, but it took me that, and then eventually, you know, then it was 200, and then 2,000, and then 20,000, and then, you know, we, I remember being in South Korea, we had 30,000 of our affiliates in a, in a room in South Korea, me being translated in Korean. So it evolved, but there was a, this process, and like you said, nobody saw that stuff. Nobody saw, you know, mm -hmm. struggling to put together, how do I, how do I inspire someone, or how do I put together the, the, the strategy to take a product from from here to the market, you know, you know, all this stuff. But that so the pivot really became during the COVID thing. I one thing I caught on very much is that pe people my like I'm 50. I see 50 year olds come. They're they're not doing so good. And I could see that you know and there's 50 year olds that were scared to leave the house because you know this, this virus is out there. And and you know, if you haven't taken care of yourself and all these, you're more susceptible to. To, to maybe you know a, a, a bad outcome if you uh, contract it, but I, so I saw this stuff. I, I got off of sugar a long time ago. I started doing things for my cellular energy because I had a naturopath talk about look, cancer starts from the cells, from your DNA, mm -hmm. and, and aging, all this stuff. And, and so it became part of my mission. Part of it, I got four daughters. I want to be around. It, it, it was irresponsible of me to not take care of myself for the people I cared about. Me. I, I've watched um, Keanu Reeves. Is it Keanu Reeves? Who's the Matrix dude? Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. All right. I saw him on a show and uh, on a talk show one time, and, and they asked, "Well, what do you think happens after you die?" And it was funny to me because he said, "What I think happens after you die is that the people that care about you the most are sad." No. <laughs> I mean, it pretty much sums up what what we know for sure will happen after you die. And I thought I thought about that. I'm like, you know. I have a responsibility to the people I know really care about me and, and depend upon me to, to me to take care of myself now. So here's what I thought. And then, then the other part of it was, I see a lot of affiliate programs and opportunities that are, that are not so good. I and mean, they're, they're really designed for the company. You know, they're, they're, they're customer acquisition programs. You bring me customers. If, the, if those customers bring customers, you're cut out of the deal. Or if they buy other products, you're cut out of the deal. I, I don't like it. I, I think I didn't like it at all. So I said, instead of me complaining about it, let me put my money, my time, my energy where my mouth is. Let's create something where people come in and they could win with us. So like when I make $20 million, my team makes $100 million. That's the way our structure has always been. It's always been like, yeah. I don't take the big chunk and you get the little chunk. If you're on the front lines doing, you should get the bigger chunk. I'll take the smaller piece. And then we got it to the point where it's a lot of people doing a little bit and we would build these massive communities. So that's really how it started. And then I have a partner, Terry LaCour. We have a multi-billion dollar backbone that does, you know, we, we don't, we just go to some formulator and say formulate some prop. Like we have 15 full-time scientists, research and development department. We got a massive legal compliance for 150,000 square foot just in, in, in that side of stuff, 450,000 square foot logistics. And, you know, we own the bank, we own all the pieces to the puzzle. So we're bringing something super, super intense that, that we're like, we can go head to head with, with just about anything. And then we're, we're, we're introducing a new delivery system for nutrition. Instead of hard to swallow pills, messy powders and sugary gummies, we got these snap packs, oh snap. You snap mm -hmm. them and you can take it straight to the head, which I do, but they were designed to go in water. And then we put, we, we got nature and science coming together with you know, clinical studies, like real clinical studies around this. So it's not just us saying it, like here's some documentation because documentation beats conversation anyway so we just felt like we could we could make some changes and then we also knew this some supplement companies will lead you to believe oh you take my pill and you're going to be great like everything's going <laughs> to be <laughs> bullshit, right? so i said let's make a we oh snap active lifestyle where it's about like let's as a community let's do let's go hiking together let's let's let me rent out roller yeah. rinks all over the all over the country and we'll stream out us hanging out with our families and going to the beach and and just get off the couch. Like, cause, you know, we, some of us got pretty lazy during COVID, man. It was easy to do because can't go anywhere. So Netflix be, and chill really became the new thing. Smoking weed, playing Xbox, you know, that kind of type of stuff. I'm like, we need to get, we need to get people moving again. Get people excited about, you know, get the blood flowing. We'll give them some great ener ener energy products, some great sleep products, some great greens and brain food and all that. But the other side of it is let's, let's all become active and hold each other accountable. So that was a piece that, supplement companies don't have they don't have the culture down they don't have the community side down yeah. which we had from other businesses so i said 
we'll bring that into it's a massive market but you're right it's a crowded space so you got to stand out and we believe you know time will tell but we we're, we're pretty confident that we've got something that that's hitting hard and because we take care of our people first it's i have six pillars the top one is is people the bottom one is compensation not not, not that compensation is important but if you don't take care of your people first, you ain't never going to pay out anything <laughs> to even worry about compensation. Yeah, you said three things there that that really hit home and, and they're really values that more and more businesses are adopting, which I'm really happy to see. But for a long time, that's not how business was done, right? For a long time, it was a company's built by its consumers. You sell a product, you get revenue. No, that's not. A company's built by building the people that go get the consumers. You build a team, that team builds your company not yep. you. I can sit here all day long and talk about the 1800 people funnel driven's helped the 92 clients we've brought in, in the last year for done for you. The thousands of people that have seen our online stuff, the many people watching and listening to this. I just own the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can do a lot of the work. And at one point I did but I wouldn't be able to do any of the stuff at the scale we do now without a team that can work around the clock for us and make sure our clients are taken care of and deliver the assets and make sure that there's optimization, do the follow-up. It just wouldn't happen. The team is what allows that to happen. The other two things I want to point out, and, and everybody watching and listening to this, I, I want you to take notes on this because I talk about this until my voice is gone. You did two very important things that most people fail to do today. And I'm going to bring this back a little bit to your, your statement earlier of everybody wants to get on stage, right? None of them do any research <laughs> ever. <laughs> and you guys, you guys did. You started with, here's the R&D. Here's the clinicals. Here's the market research. Here's how we can actually help somebody, not just sell something that's already there. Here's how we can actually make an impact. Then you brought in the culture and that culture's led to why you guys sold out in four days after your first launch. Yeah. It wasn't crickets. I've been on the receiving end of launching something and wind blows by, tumbleweed shows up. You have no idea what's going on. Well, Four I've been, days. I've been there. Trust me. I know that one very well. <laughs> and, and that kind of leads me to, to something I want to talk briefly about. We've got to wrap up here in a few minutes. So I want to make sure that you have time to talk about Oh Snap. I know you guys have a huge ambassador program that you guys are doing. I want to make sure you guys can talk about that, where people can find you. But before we get there, there's this there's this conceptualization that's going on. And I, I kind of want to know what your thought process is on this. We see it all the time. People are looking for that, that fix, right? They're trying to figure out what their next thing is or how to take what they're doing to the next level. And with us, we specialize in digital marketing, intent affinity and neuroscience. So we're always talking about, okay, the, the rules haven't changed. Human psychology is the same. It's the delivery method and the platform that you're doing it on. You've been able to transcend that throughout your life. And this goes all the way back to your first entrance to entrepreneurship, mine too. Whether we like it or not, drug dealing is one of the purest forms of entrepreneurship. You got to hustle to make that shit happen. It happens to be illegal. I don't recommend anybody do that. Do things on the up and up. Do things to better mankind. But we're going to call it what it is. That transcendence has kind of affected PC and cancel culture. Something that didn't exist even 10 years ago, five years ago, maybe even three years ago pushing it maybe what do you think's caused that what do you think has been the that catalyst that from society's point of view because if you follow the numbers my generation and the generation after have the two highest millionaire and billionaire status per capita of any generation in recorded human history 37 percent of millennials are a millionaire by the time they're 25 32 percent of the generation after trending to be that's six times higher than the prior generation's last recorded number. But at the same time, somehow the same generation that grew up with South Park and fucking Mad TV and all of these shows that we're accustomed to are offended by everything. What do you think caused that? This, <laughs> we have, we go through, because look, I'm married to a millennial. Mm -hmm. I have... Uh, three millennial daughters and a what's the next one after that? The Z. Uh, I think my, Gen Z, right? Z. What's that? What's the, uh, 
they freak me out. I, I, <laughs> she freaks me out. Like they, they, there's not there's not a lot of logic. There's a lot of emotion. It's it, it, mm-hmm. most of it driven, and I get it. We're we're all emotional to a certain extent, but but the the skin being so thin so easily offended I, I didn't come from that my, my dad was a steel worker who mm-hmm. went to the steel mill then went straight to the bar my dad could have his arm could have been chopped off and he would not complain about his arm being chopped. you know what i mean he yeah if he, if he he could i knew like we would know he was sick but he would never ever act sick he you know he had this whole different thing he was he's a, a man who had to support his family figure out a way to get up to the neighborhood he got picked up by Flight for Life um, from the steel. He got crushed by a, a steel press. Flight for Life picked him up. He was in intensive care for a year. Nobody thought he was going to survive. Lives is in a rehabilitation program where he, he had to lay flat on his stomach. But picture a wheelchair where you lay flat on your mm-hmm. stomach and you wheel like this. You're laying flat out because it ripped out all the muscles, took all the skin, all everything up, like his back, his butt, his yeah. back of his legs. He never complained. Like, it was, he was in pain constantly. So it's a, it's weird to me to, to go from that generation. Then you get my generation. We are a little, little softer for sure, but still, then you go to the millennials. Now there's, there, it's a lot more. If you say something I don't like, I'm going to be offended and I'm going to probably blow <laughs> what put you <laughs> out yeah. there. I got, I know how to work social media and I can make you look like shit. And then you got the Gen Z's that'll cancel you in a, in a, in, in a, in a heartbeat or out. Ba- they'll cancel you based on something they heard from someone else about you. So it, it's, I don't know where this takes us. Um, but I do think like shows like this, I do think, I, I think the media ex- ex- exploits it a little bit more maybe than what it really is. You know what I mean? But I, I see what my, I see with my kids. So we have these debates in the house sometimes, but I'm also, I'm also explaining to them why my dad was way, the way he was and why his grandfather was yeah. the way. And so it's like anything else. Why do black people have issues with white people? And white people have issues with black people. A lot of times it's just, we haven't connected. We haven't right. had dialogue. I, I don't know. That's, maybe, I, maybe, I mean, I, I know I, because I, I'm, I wasn't yeah. come from that culture. I grew up in that neighborhood. But a lot of people don't know. And I explained to some of my, you know, my, my black friends, my, my wife, my, mo- my mother, who's, yeah. who's, that it's not that they're necessarily racist. They don't understand. They don't know. There's some ignorance always around some of this stuff. And I don't know. I, again, this is a deep topic, man. So we can go off into all. Lots of I think you summed it up perfectly, and it's going to be a good segue. And, and here's why: connection. Connection's key to that. Socioeconomic complacency is one of the biggest problems that we're trying to solve here at the Inbound Secret by providing access to knowledge. Hell, motivation. I hate the term too, but inspiration more than anything from seeing that it can be done from people that were in your shoes or worse. Right? We're highlighting the possibility, the opportunity. Like my mantra is you were made to thrive, not just survive. Like your shirt says to build your empire, right? That connection, I think, is degraded Uh. throughout generations. Because while I use technology and you use technology and the basis of everything that we use was designed to give us connection. Facebook wasn't designed to remove human connection. It was designed to give you a place to connect with your friends, your classmates, your family, other people. And that's become more important today than ever, especially while going through a pandemic. Now, this is why I say it's a perfect segue. One of the things that you were worried about and I applaud you for taking action on this to be around there for your family. It's something that I fell victim to too. I'm only 29 this year in July, 28 right now. I got fat during COVID, man. (laughs) (laughs) So I've been hitting the gym hard and tracking macros. I hired a trainer, been doing the nootropics, been taking vitamins, been whole nine dedication to it. Cause you've got to dedicate to make something happen, but it's a perfect segue for oh snap. And I, I want you to talk about that here for a second, everybody, before I hand it over to John, I just want you to reflect on yourself for a second. Do the perfect you exercise. If you have not read about that, pick up a copy of my book, how prolific mistakes make prolific profits. There's an entire chapter on that exercise. And remember you were made to thrive, not just survive. John, take it away, my man. No, it's my it's my pleasure, bro. You know, and, and remind me, I'm gonna get some oh snap 
you know, products to you, you know, these snap packs are, are revolutionary. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're bringing a new technology, new delivery technology to the table. I, I do understand today, you've got to be unique. You've got to be relevant. You know, we, we, we like to be sexy and cool. Well, my wife is definitely sexy and cool. I just ride off of her sexy coolness. <laughs> <laughs> but one of our, part of our secret sauce in our company is diversity, you know, young, more mature, black, white, everything in between it. We're, we're, we're incredibly open and tolerant. We understand that, you know, we all come from different things. We got different things going on and we, we embrace the differences of people. And I think that's what, what why our culture is uh, inside of our, our personal community has thrived for so many years. And we, we, integrity is a big thing. When I say people first, you know, I'm looking at the integrity. We, we don't, we, we have a no dickhead policy in our company, which means I'm not, looking, <laughs> I'm not looking for the, you know, the, the person who's always got issues and challenges. And you know how they create just drama everywhere they yeah. go. And, and, and part of what our company was about is like, you know, some people wear the victim badge very well and, and they make sure everybody knows, oh, poor me, victim, victim, victim. And they're quick to, to bash other people. But if you throw a rock at them, they're the first ones, you know, to, to, to scream and cry and call the police and want to have you executed. So we want to create an environment, you know, conducive to growth, but we, you know, like-minded entrepreneurs come together. It doesn't matter your background, color, skin, all that. And then we deliver high quality, incredible products to the marketplace. And then we compensate the people. Like it's always, if you contribute to the community, you benefit from the community. So we're just, we're building something that fortunately you can experience it. It's nutrition you can experience, which is hard to find. So you, you first experience it through a snap pack because people are like, dang, that's pretty, pretty cool. And then the absorption, then there's all different components around it. So I, I don't need to go into a lot of, because we built it for speed. We built it incredible. It's simple. For me, there's no fancy footwork anywhere. I can't do fancy shit. So it has to be two or three steps. If you give me 15 steps or something, I'm out of it. So two mm. or three steps to get to the marketplace, two or three steps when it comes to prospecting, follow-up, onboarding, everything is streamlined. We brought high touch and high tech together. We built an app for our team that's got, you know, click funnels, survey monkey, constant contact, you know, it's got everything built into it. We provide all the tools, all the training that, that someone would need to learn scaling, leadership, team building. So here's what happened. I had a mentoring program that people were paying me. I said, you know what? I'm going to launch this company. I'm going to, and, and I was, and trust me, my monthly income from that mentoring program, was, <laughs> I would put it against <laughs> almost anybody. <laughs> I said, I'm canceling it. And here's what I told everybody. I said, instead of you paying me, I'm going to pay you. I'm going to mentor you, but I'm going to pay you. And how am I going to do it? You're going to work side by side with me. I'm not going to be on top of you or anything. We're going to work together in the trenches and go build something significant. Let's go change the world one, one snap at a time, one person at a time. And so that's what's happening now. We're bringing people in and I'm teaching all the things I was teaching in the mentoring program. But now I can say in real time, in real life, here's how that applies. Let me show you when we're tracking customers, how we're using the API to connect stuff. all this stuff, e-commerce, drop shipping, all these things, we're showing them how to do it. And what I love is like, I, I say, look, if we're here and you help us to get here and you want to go do something else, I'm not going to be mad at you. We got other people that'll help us to get here. And I'm going to say, thank God you were here, Bryce, because you, you helped us to get from off the ground to right here. Hallelujah. Like other companies, I'll be pissed off at you. I can't believe you left. Like, no, and he came, he, he did some things. He brought some cool people. He got some customers here. Now we got a foundation that we can work off of. So, anyways, uh, so it worked. So we're also encouraging people. Like you got a you got a restaurant. You want to you want to be a restaurant tour? I was a restaurant tour for four years, nightclub owner. I wouldn't recommend it, but if that's your dream, <laughs> we can we can help you there. Whatever it is you want to do, we we get, you know we want to help you become the best you. And by helping you build your brand and getting yourself right, you can only contribute to our community at that point. Yeah. And then whatever comes because of that, you know, great. We all benefit from it. And you go on and, and do whatever. You want to be the president, whatever. So that, that's, that's what we're about, man. In, in a so one, one vital question for you, man. Where can people find out more about this? Sign up to be an ambassador. Learn more about your, your mentorship program. Join the OSAP movement. Where can people find it? I, I tell people, you know, I manage my, my personal Instagram page, at john.malot. A lot of the other stuff other people are involved in but that that i it's my connection and i make sure i always want to be there so i would say you can hit me up there personally if you want to just give me a minute i go i get through everybody but it, sometimes it takes a while so or they can go straight to osnap.com and they can go in there and they can click around and they can buy a product or they can hit us up to become an ambassador uh but probably the best way i, I if, if you find me through here because the way i work is bryce and i know this 
you don't even know this. We never talk about it. But if, if, if someone came through this platform, I'd like to know that because I want to make sure I'm sending you some more product. You know, you're in the gym working. I got a product that like Mark Henry, world's strongest man, just sent me a text this morning. He said, bro, your surge product is off the hook. Yeah. Someone gave surge to Terrell Owens, T.O., and they told me he wants to talk to the owner of the company. So we got some cool shit happening. Right. Got some big influences that are coming to the table. And I just want to, it's just how we roll. I want to give back to anyone that's, that's giving to us. So. Awesome. Well, you heard it here first, guys. Make sure that you go hit up O Snap. Get with John Malott. It was a pleasure to have you on today, my man. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Stuff like this has a big impact in the world. I can promise you that. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. This is the inbound secret. Deep is the secret. Deep is the secret.